Hi everyone, welcome to the Woolen Spinning Advent Vlog. It is Wednesday, December 9th. I hope this finds you well. I hope you're getting some spinning done and some knitting, maybe some weaving, getting through some gift knitting, whatever it is that you're working on this uh, Wednesday afternoon. It is just becoming quite sunny here. We had torrential rain this morning, but the sun is coming through. There's breaks in the clouds and it's actually really quite lovely outside right now. So let's get into it for today's Advent Vlog. So I'm going to open day nine of my spinning Advent calendar. Oh, I can already tell this one's going to be gorgeous. I'm still falling quite far behind. Look at this. How much fun is this? I'm excited to, to spin this one. I am going to sit quietly this afternoon and work on my spinning for a little bit because I'm unfortunately getting quite far behind and I really uh, need to sort of do some catch up. So I have almost finished, I think it was day six. See, I told you I was far behind. I have four to catch up on. So I've got day six on the wheel behind me and I have day seven prepped and ready to go. And then I have day eight here ready to be prepped. And then I will prep day nine. I'm hoping that by the end of the week I can get relatively caught up because uh, I don't really want to go into next week behind. So I know I said the same thing yesterday, but one day at a time. I have been working on my cowl. Uh, this is by Mina Phillips and it's called The Evil Eye. And I have not gotten to the color work yet, but I wanted to show you because this yarn is, I think it was called Noel remember I think it was called Noel uh, by Nest Fiber Studio she um, it was one of her fiber club colorways from either last year or the year before anyhow I wanted to share with you how this is knitting up because um, you, sometimes we make yarn we spin yarn that we that really the the skein is absolutely beautiful and it speaks to us and we're so excited about it and it's just absolutely beautiful and then when we go to knit with it, it kind of falls flat and we're surprised at that and sort of wondering what happened. And there's a myriad of things that can happen. And I think that's a discussion for maybe another time to go into more detail about why sometimes those beautiful skeins knit up sort of fall flat. But because this phenomenon that I want to talk about today is the opposite. So what happens when we have those skeins of yarn that we finish that fall flat that we just feel really disappointed by or it's not what we thought that it would look like or how, that it would didn't turn out the way that we thought that it would and then we go to knit with it and it absolutely sings what is that all about so this is one of those skeins I had made a crepe yarn because I wanted to try the technique and this was a while ago and the finished yarn I was really really disappointed with and the reason is because all of the color in the yarn, that gorgeous seafoam teal color and that gorgeous sort of red cranberry color ended up mixing all together and losing sort of their je ne sais quoi, their, their bright pop that they had had in the original braid. And I'll insert some photos of what the original braid looked like here and I'll also insert some photos of the finished yarn. However, knitted, this yarn is turning out really well and it kind of reminds me a little bit of a candy cane. Um, I really, really like how it's knitting up. So I'm currently in the section of the cowl where you knit straight for the first little while and then you work the first chart which fades from the stockinette and from the plain knitting into the color work. So this is uh, from Mina Phillips book cowls and I will link to it down below for you guys so that you can have a look at it. It's uh, just a beautiful book. I talked about it on the most recent episode of wool and spinning on the podcast. So that was episode 179. Anyhow, look at how beautifully that is knitting up. And I think that this is one of those situations where in the skein, all of that color jumbled together was disappointing for me and then when but when you see it knitted and it's laying flat in a fabric and you can see the movement of that gorgeous red the movement of the blue it doesn't really strike not really um the color is moving moving quite nicely across across the fabric and it it just has a really lovely feel it's not homogenous it's still interesting 
but nonetheless, it's really working out beautifully. I'm excited to see what the color work will look like because the uh, contrast color will be white because I'm going for quite a Christmassy look. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to scream Christmas uh, so that I can wear it at other times, but I, I don't have anything that's really like a toque or a cowl that's Christmassy. That is the kettle. I am going to go grab it. I had mentioned how cold I am, so I made a big pot of tea. So sorry for the screaming kettle. This is one of those things that I was really hoping for something that would give me uh, sort of a, a Christmassy holiday season sort of um, knit knitted item because I don't have like Halloween I have like my toque and I've got a couple of shawls that I like to wear in October but I don't really have anything for December which is kind of weird so this is going to fill that gap in my sort of knitting wardrobe if you will the other thing that I have almost finished is my uh, mum's headband so I wanted to share with you how this yarn knit up in a very interesting way. So if you have a quick look at this, this is one colorway, but it's two different yarns spun two different ways because this braid was a seconds from Sweet Georgia. It's not a colorway that they have anymore. It was, this is from like 2006, 2007. And it's on the Panda base, which is a bamboo merino nylon. And I had spun part of the braid as a two ply, I had spun part of it as a traditional three ply, and I had spun part of it as a chain ply. And more than anything, it was just because I didn't know what I was doing at that time. And I was playing around. So the first part of this headband, right up till that to that midway mark, is the two ply that I ended up holding double because it was too finely spun and plied to match the gauge of the three ply. So this is the three ply from here onward and you can see there's that stripe in the fabric. The gauge of the yarn is the same but you can see how chain plying versus two plying uh, and then basically creating a four ply because I held the yarn double, uh, created two very different effects because over here you have a um, almost like a fade happening from, and the colors stay cleaner. So you've got the lighter greens together, the medium greens together, and then sort of these dark, dark mossy greens together. Whereas with the two ply that was then folded and held double, um, the color is way more mixed up and you can't and you lose that lighter green and the whole thing just looks medium so two different ways of spinning but and two different results unfortunately it sort of created a bit of a line in the headband but the thing is once it's on you won't you won't be able to see it um it won't be something that will be sort of noticeable so i am almost done now i'm all tangled up I have this little bit of yarn left. I am going to knit until I finish it because I have about an inch left of knitting. And then I'll sew this thing up and hopefully I'll insert a little video, a little bit of video at the end of me actually sewing, uh, which will be today. So fingers crossed. Anyways, I will see you guys on the other side. Have a wonderful day and I'll chat with you again tomorrow. Bye everyone.